Hello, it is Friday, March 11th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, so a themeless crossword, and this themeless edition of the Daily Solve is brought to you by Overfull Hitbox, Joseph Schwalbach, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level, directly supporting this channel. If you'd like to do so and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up, including there should be two more going up today and tomorrow, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And uh, another uh, another uh, person to recognize today, we have a message from Heidi who said, hi, my college friends and I are from Finland and we formed a group of crossword solvers and makers. Is there any chance we could get a shout out in your next video? We often watch your videos after solving the daily crosswords together and we're big fans. Uh, thank you, Heidi, for writing in. That was That's uh, very nice to hear. And yes, hello and welcome to all of the members of Alto Liopiston Sakon Sinori Kilan Ristikoyas. Um, apologies for however poorly that was that was pronounced, but I, uh, I hope you're doing well in Finland. I've been to Finland uh, once before. I went to Kajaani, which was I thought very. Uh, I had a really good time, and there's a very beautiful church there. Anyway, um, let's move on to the puzzle today. This is, as I said, a Friday New York Times puzzle. It was constructed by Robin Weintraub, who is, I think, often known, in fact, as the queen of the Fridays. She is a um, an accomplished New York Times constructor, and in particular, an accomplished New York Times themeless constructor. So I think we should have a, a uh, quite a good puzzle in store for us today. So let's get on with that. Ready to get started? Okay. Parent company of Strohs and Schlitz. Um, this would be a brewer, right? I'm not sure. Coors, maybe? All of these, all of those companies are all owned by larger companies. Even the larger companies tend to be owned by even larger companies. Oh, it could be InBev. Isn't InBev the one that owns almost everybody? I don't know if InBev actually owns these particular. I could be, these might even be, I might be on the wrong track entirely. I don't know. Let's, let's move on. Acronym on a pay stub. Um, hmm, not sure. You see things like year to date, that sort of thing on pay stubs, but I'm not sure. Many Kellogg school grads. Well, it'll end with an S because this is plural. Goes with, could be C's as in dates somebody goes out with them. It could be. Lake bordering four states. It could be Lake Erie, I'm guessing, especially based on the cross there. And here we have sorry, can't stay. Got a split, maybe? That's pretty speculative. We're really going to check, need to check the crosses. Musaka go with. Mm. I don't know. Pita, maybe? I'm not sure, but uh, I'm not confident enough about got a split. Grand, ungodly, godlike man of fiction. I wish I knew that immediately, but I don't think I do. Let's keep going down the acrosses. It's a blank. This crossword grid largely right now. <laughs> Key blank. Um, it could be the name of a place like Key Largo. Um, Key Lime, it could be. Does that work? Oh, it does. Rocker Man is Amy Man. I think I've mentioned on this this series before. I've seen I saw her live years and years and years ago at this point. Kitchen gadget, also known as a Parisian scoop. Interesting. Kellogg School. Are these CPAs, maybe? Certified or Chartered Public Accountants? Parisian scoop. Short-term financing off option. A private loan, maybe? No, that doesn't work. Could end in loan, though, couldn't it? Points on a math test. Could be loci or foci. Color whose name comes from the French for unbleached. A crew, maybe? And becomes less sharp. 
probably ends in an S, website space savers. I don't know. Let's delete all of this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this probably does end in an S, though. Website space savers. What does that mean? Um, name of a family that took in an extraterrestrial. Oh, I don't know. Is this E.T. or ALF, maybe? I'm not sure what any of the family names are. Um, the boy's name in E.T. is Elliot, but I don't remember his last name. The Simpsons grandfather. I think Abe Simpson is the grandfather. Maybe this is Peta, the Masaka go with. Oh, grand ungodly godlike man of fiction. This must be Captain Ahab from Moby Dick. I suspect that's the case. It sounds like an accurate description. Grand, ungodly, godlike. Oh, is Pabst perhaps the parent company of Strauss and Schlitz? That sounds, that sounds right. Um, well done to them for apparently not being owned by an even larger company. Maybe they are. I don't know. Term of endearment. Could be Babe. Show on which Mariska Har Hargitay stars as Olivia Benson informally. I... Don't think I recognize either of those names, unfortunately. And here we have number to call. Could be tell, telephone number. You'd see it abbreviated that way in a listing or maybe a business card or something. Sorry, can't stay. Looks like I have to jet, maybe? I have to go is the more obvious one, but it doesn't fit the number of letters needed. What about this? Land south of the Caspian Sea. I'm going to delete this for now, actually. And what is this? Show on which... Oh, SVU maybe? Special Victims Unit? I've not seen that, but I've heard of it. Is that law and, is that a law? I think a law and order spinoff. I always forget the difference between the law and order and the CSI spinoff, but I think this must be correct. It's a blank. Oh, tabula rasa, literally a blank slate. There we go. And Cho's predecessor in the Star Trek franchise. So John Cho played um the character played by George George Decay. What uh what is the character's name? Sulu, I think. Sulu. That's sounds I'm certain that's correct. All right. Oh, name of a family that took in an extraterrestrial. I see. Very clever. Bit of misdirection in a way. It must be the Kent family, because because Superman is, is actually, in fact, an extra, extraterrestrial. So the Kent family took in Clark Kent. AKA Superman. Um Sorry, can't stay. Is this Oman, land south of the Caspian Sea? Oh no, it's Iran, sorry, Iran. And then acronym on a pay stub. Um, I think it's Iran. Acronym on a pay stub. I don't know, I'm gonna leave it in for now. I'm pretty sure that's right. Common setting for a grim tale. A forest, I suppose, is pretty common. And kvetcher's list. Someone who kvetches, someone who complains. Um, tough, blank, and actress to Armas. Anna? I think, I think I've actually seen this in the crossword before, fortunately. Acronym on a pay stub. Oh... Uh, I haven't seen a U.S. pay stub in a while. I can't, this looks familiar. Um, what is it? FICA, Federal Insurance, Insurance. no, that's FICO, Federal Insurance Corporate, uh, what is it? What am I thinking of? What is this? Oh, I have to run. That looks right. So tough. Oh, it is FICA. Right, Federal Insurance Corporation, or Federal Insurance, something about, it's something about that. I believe this is the organization that ensures money held in banking institutions. But I can't remember what it stands for. So ah, that's very frustrating. Anyway, someone will tell me in a comment, presumably. So tough customer is the, uh, looks like the answer here. And like a screwdriver. So it could be the tool, obviously. It could be the cocktail. What is a screwdriver? Is it 
Vodka orange juice or vodka grapefruit? It's one of those. Um, it's been a while since I had one of those. Uh, Fetcher's list. Nose, maybe, but I don't think that's right. Marine blank. Marine Le Pen, French presidential candidate? Probably not. Marine life? Marine... Um, sort of just fumbling around here, aren't I? Let's let's move on. Non-committal, committal. Um, I don't think I have enough to take a guess at that yet. Dolly-esque, say. So Dolly was... I mean, Dolly could be many things, but... Just based on the fill being five letters, I'm wondering if this refers to Dolly the sheep that was cloned. The descriptor for sheep is ovine, right? Does that work? It's a bit speculative. Let's check the crosses. The Blank Pound, hip-hop duo. I don't know, but honestly, it's just purely based on the fill and that O there. I'm wondering if it's the dog pound with two Gs. He's no scoundrel. A gent. Yeah, that's actually working. Permanently could be ever. It rarely includes chains. Could be chain stores. What about this? Approved. Could be greenlit. There we go. Gave the okay to something. Multi-week quadrennial event. The Winter Olympics, which recently... I don't know. Oh, Winter Games. There we go. The Winter Olympic Games recently concluded. Convention's list of woes, your list of woes, the things about which you're complaining. And Marine, why do I not say, oh, Marine One, that's the name of the U.S. President's helicopter, as opposed to Air Force One, which is the, the U.S. President's um, airliner uh, jet. Okay, non-committal committal. Definite maybe. Ah, there we go. That's a, that's a good that's a good entry for a, a crossword. Definite maybe. It's sort of a it's a it is, it's a phrase that exists, but it's not it's not common enough to be to be a total gimme. But but it works. It rarely includes chains. Fine art something. Website, oh, interesting. Oh, no, no, this is that same website, Space Savers, I saw before. It's not a different one. Word often contracted in contractions. Not, the, probably the, possibly one of the, possibly the most common contraction in English, often contracted to apostrophe NT, or N apostrophe T, sorry. Um, pedigree alternative. I'm guessing this is the pet food brand but I don't know what the alternative is. What about this? Largest digit in a set. And here we have ecosystem that comes and goes. High tide, maybe? Is that? Could you describe that as an ecosystem? I mean, I'm sure there are organisms that are adapted to a high tide area in particular. So in that sense, it would be an ecosystem. What about this? Company whose corporate logo is known as the Fuji. I don't know. I mean, Fuji is an apple, so I could have guessed apple, but I've never heard that phrase before, so that doesn't seem right. Um, the Fuji. Boy, I don't know. I'm really interested to know. That I'll be very curious to see. That's a good, it's a good clue, whatever it is. I just don't know the answer. Muse of Love Poetry is a rato. A Greek myth. Um, oh, Sharp, maybe? Sharp. What is the Sharp logo? I can't bring it to mind. Oh, that's frustrating. I'll have to look it up. I know I've seen it before. It's a Japanese electronics brand. Um, I mean, this might not be the answer. I suppose I should double check. Oh, this could be high tide, actually, with that ecosystem. And here we have, Sh oh no, but it's not. Because this is uh, Shankar with a Lifetime Achievement Grammy. Must be Ravi Shankar. Oh, Atari. Right, okay, I do know the Atari logo. It looks like sort of, um, I don't know, you could almost describe it as maybe sort of, if you imagined a 
a rocket taking off into space. You could, the shape of the Atari logo could almost be described as the shape of the exhaust from its engines, from the, from the rocket exhaust. I don't know. You could maybe describe it sort of that way. The Fuji, I didn't know that. All right, pedigree alternative. Oh, Alpo actually sounds familiar now that I see the A and the L. Oh, an ecosystem that comes and goes. A tideway, maybe, or tide, tide pool. How about that? That that sounds more, more credible than any of the other things I was saying. Oh, largest digit in a set. Very clever clue. Big toe. A digit meaning a finger or toe in this case. Um, and website space savers. Ah, drop down menus. There we go. And it rarely in includes chains. Fine. Dining. Ah, yes. You Fine dining, typically you don't have chain restaurants associated with it. Scourge of the 2020s, colloquially. Oh. Um, that's interesting. We're living in it right now. Uh, hmm. Singer with the alter ego Ziggy Stardust is David Bowie. And features of stringed instruments are pegs used to tune the strings. Pumpkin, e.g. Um, sorry, what do I not see what this is? Uh, it's not a wine, is it? it? Doesn't seem right. Boy, sometimes I just baffle myself with my inability to see things that sh seem like they should be very straightforward. Get in the blank. I don't know this either. Hmm. Scourge of the tw oh oh Rona for coronavirus. Wow, strange. Um. Interestingly, I haven't actually seen this abbreviation often. I have. I mean, I've seen it more than no times, but not very many more than that. That's interesting. It's sort of a surprising inclusion. Regrets, perhaps. Oh, RSVP. Oh, pumpkin vine. Of course, pumpkins grow on vines. Uh, and get in the swim. That, I'm not sure what that is. Everything else looks correct. Get in the swim. That must simply be, must be an idiom that I don't know. Fair enough. It happens. Propose to. Could be pose to. Uh, <laughs> includes, it can be composed of letters from propose. You could say, you could propose a question or pose a question. I mean, I guess they're not quite the same, but they're very similar. They're very, very similar. It might be the answer, but I'm not completely certain. Finish. And some etiquette rules are no-nos, perhaps? Okay, well, that, that looks like it isn't pose, um, which would have been surprising to me. Organization with a morning rounds daily briefing. Not sure. Freak out could be go ape, maybe, in this number of letters. And color O. Although this with the U could still be a crew for the color whose, fr whose name comes from the French for unbleached. So does that work here? Points on a math test. Oh, and this could be my original answer as well. That's funny. Oh, no, of course it could, because I already, that was my entire guess was predicated on those two things being together. So that's not new information. Um, becomes less sharp. Keep wanting to think dolls, which could, which could apply either to a blade or a, a mind. Are there other meanings of sharp? Gave a ta-da moment. Revealed, perhaps? You reveal something and say ta-da? Oh, dims. Dim. So in the sense of intelligence, if you become less sharp, you become more dim, so to speak. So this doesn't look great, does it? Uh, maybe this isn't a crew. I don't know. What is this kitchen gadget thing? Oh, a melon baller. Oh, that's funny. Melon baller. <laughs> All right, actually quite a straightforward... Um, answer, but certainly, and known as a Parisian scoop, that sort of makes sense because a melon baller, I think at this point is a slightly 
is a slightly dated implement. And it's really, it's associated with, you know, things like, um, you could have balls of melon and prosciutto or something, which is, I mean, it's a great pairing. It's uh, certainly enjoy it. Uh, nothing, not to cast aspersions in the slightest. Um, but it, it comes from a, from, you know, maybe a couple of, uh, it's actually speaking of fine dining, a slightly earlier conception of fine dining that was very, um, predicated around sort of French and Italian, um, custom. And so the Parisienne scoop seems like an appropriate name for it, which I did not know. But anyway, many college school grads, oh, it must be MBAs, not CPAs. So it must be a business school and short-term financing. Oh, bridge loan. There we go. Bridge loan. So what did I say? Private loan or something? Bridge loan looks correct. Like a screwdriver. Ah, orange. So it must be orange juice and, uh, and vodka. Oh, I didn't even see this one. Agreement between mates could be I, so you could have shipmates in that case. And this does look like a crew, doesn't it? And this does look like dims. All right, so what about this? Oh, freak out is to alarm. Right, okay. Don't freak out, don't alarm. Hmm. It's not how I usually think of using it, but I suppose it works. And here we have what noise cancelers may cancel. A roar, perhaps? So what is this? Organization with a morning rounds daily briefing. The American Medical Association. Perhaps this is an email newsletter they send? Seems entirely plausible. What a funny answer. What a funny clue. Uh, a roar. And finish is to wrap up. There we go. We're, we will shortly do that with this puzzle, I think. A major affront is a slap. 1960s to 70s Soviet space program. And here we have proposed to... Oh, plan to. Ah, I was really... I was fell into the classic crossword solving trap, which is that I got really hung up on one particular sense of propose. I was thinking propose as in pose or present. Um, but this is proposed to do something, to plan to do it. So it's it's very similar, but just a slightly different usage, and it was keeping me from getting the answer. Characters at checkout. Coupon? Oops. Coupon code, maybe? Characters meaning alphanumeric characters? Does that work? James Corden's network. Um, I'm not sure. Is it CBS, maybe? What does James Corden do? I mean, I know of him. He's an English comedian who now, I believe, lives and works in the United States. So CBS, presumably. Opportunity to rack up extra points, perhaps. Bonus something. And so here we have, oh, Luna, 1960s, 70s Soviet space program. That looks right. And opportunity to rack up extra points, perhaps. Bonus something. Organization targeted by mom's demand action. I think the NRA, the National Rifle Association. And military crashing site. Military crashing site. Oh, a cot, maybe. So crashing meaning go to sleep, I think, perhaps on a cot in a military dormitory. World weary sort. Oh, Atlas, who held the world on his shoulders. Or I think didn't. I think maybe held the sky on his shoulders in reality, but was portrayed as holding the globe. I don't know. Someone tell me if that's wrong. I think that's the case, though. Unfair. Oh, and there's a question mark. Oh, so it could be foul, as in foul or fair. So the opposite of foul. And the question mark indicates, I think it might, might have been the only question mark. No, it wasn't. World Weary Sword also had the question mark or pun. So actually they were crossing each other. And so that just indicates that there's a bit of wordplay going on. We need to read this in a non-literal way, or maybe, so actually sometimes it means you do read it in a literal way, but a non-idiomatic way. In this case, uh, we're taking the opposite of the word fair in the, when fair means beautiful. The opposite is foul. Smattering could be a few. We'd only have a smattering of cells left to fill. Blank Turnblad, John Travolta roll in Hairspray. Edna? I've never seen Hairspray, but that seems, seems right. Opportunity to rack up extra points, perhaps. Bonus round, I would think. And joins a union is weds. There we go. And that's the Friday puzzle. 
this was, I think, indeed a very good Friday puzzle. And the reason I say that is because I found it essentially challenging throughout. I found it, it was always putting up resistance to me, um, but never to the point where it felt extremely unfair or that I was just utterly stumped to the point that I couldn't make progress. I kept solving the whole time, um, but it never really felt like a total pushover. And I think that's exactly what I want out of a Friday puzzle. So uh, well done to Robin Weintraub, as usual. I mean, that's not no surprise coming from her, but uh, but I really enjoyed it. And some nice, some nice answers. I like things like definite maybe. I think that's a good crossword uh, answer and drop down menus. Definite maybe. I'm very curious to know if that's a, um, a debut appearance. Um, Tabula Rosso probably is certainly not. Melon Baller might be. That's funny. But maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, a good, a good solid crossword and uh, some things with which I was unfamiliar, which usually happens. I don't think I know the dog pound, but that was relatively straightforward. I didn't know that Stroh's and Schlitz were owned by Pabst. I'm curious if Pabst is itself owned by a larger company. Um, and I need to remind myself what FICA stands for. I used to know what it stands for, but I can't, can no longer remember. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't even think there's really all that much to, to clarify here. It's just a good, solid Friday themeless puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And speaking of things to clarify, let's discuss, let's clarify and discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle. We did get several, got a few, not too many, but a few comments from yesterday. So this is embarrassing. This is deeply embarrassing, I have to say. So um, yesterday there was a clue around the concept of neat. And I the fill on that was N-O-I-C-E. And the way I interpreted that was to pronounce it as a single word, noise, as in a sort of, sort of I, I think what I postulated was perhaps a Southern California um, dialect pronunciation of nice. Noise, neat, nice. No, that's not what it was, or at least it's almost certainly not. As Richard Lorenzen and some people in the um, Daily Solve Discord chat server pointed out, Neat refers to a drink with no ice. I'll have it neat. I'll have a whiskey neat, a whiskey no ice. Yes, of course it does. And I just didn't see it at all. Perhaps I've been solving too many cryptic crosswords in which um, word length counts are specified in the clue. So this sort of thing, <laughs> that sort of thing can't happen. But anyway, yes, it is not noise. It was no ice. So thank you, Richard Lawrence and, and all. And at least to be fair to myself, a number of other people made the same mistake. So that made me feel slightly better. And ZOR95, um, this isn't a correction per se, but it is an explanation that was very interesting. The biathlon is skiing and shooting. So what a funny, what a funny collection of two things, skiing and shooting. I find that utterly mystifying. I'm sure there's a reason for it historically, but it is interesting. Uh, anyway, ZOR95 goes on to explain triathlon is swimming, cycling, and running. See, that seems somehow more... Th those are all places to get somewhere fast, I suppose. They're all, well, not... I mean, they're all ways to traverse distance, I guess. But ZOR95 continues, if we are looking for arbitrary collections of sport, you can't look past the modern pentathlon. Constructed to represent the ideal skill set for a 19th century soldier behind enemy lines. I love that. It involves fencing, freestyle swimming, freestyle swimming, show jumping controversially on an unfamiliar horse, and now a combined shooting and cross-country running event called the Laser Run. I love that. That is great. Show jumping controversially on an, controversially on an unfamiliar horse. That's incredible. I, is it still done that way? That's amazing. I, I adore that. I need to... I'll... I don't think I've ever watched pentathlon. I'm absolutely going to seek that out now. That's incredible. Fencing, freestyle swimming, show jumping on an unfamiliar horse, shooting and cross country running. That is just unbelievable. Okay. And that's all I have. So thank you for watching this edition of the Daily Solve. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and the solve. And um, thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. And don't forget, in addition to well, if you back at the benefactor level, you get the Let's Check the Crosses mug and that recognition at the beginning of the episodes. And if you back at any level at all, you get 
all of the bonus videos. So today, hopefully today, I will record this week's um, mini puzzle speed solve compilation as well as, well, no, I've already recorded, in fact, the current Boss Words Spring Themeless League competition puzzle. So I'll put that up, I think, tomorrow, which is when the solution will have been revealed and therefore it's not, they request no spoilers. So I'm, I'm waiting until that point. And then I, I really need to do a um, Constructor's Corner a community created crossword puzzle solve roundup. So I'll do that as soon as I can. Maybe I'll do that today as well. Anyway, you get all of those as well as the extra channel on the Daily Self Discord chat server if you back the Patreon campaign. And thanks to everybody who's done so. So I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, perhaps um, a bit more difficult than this one. That's the intention anyway. And another themeless puzzle, the second of two of the week. I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.